How can the U.S. make amends for the legacy of slavery? That's the question at the center of a new documentary, The Cost of Inheritance, an America reframe special that traces our country's legacy of racism, inequality, and the ongoing battle over reparations in America, ahead of the film's premiere on PBS. I'm joined now by the film's director, Yoruba Richin, and Lottie Lieb Dula, founder of Reparations for Slavery, who's also featured in the film. So I want to start with you, Yoruba. What got you to make this film? Was there a particular moment that really triggered this for you? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having us. And Lottie, great to see you. Um, I was brought this project by the executive producer, Daryl Ford Williams, who uh, worked with a team, was working with a team of universities and foundations um, called Just Futures, where they were looking at the, they were tasked to study the issue of reparations uh, on a really broad scale. And part of that was uh, funding for a documentary film. And um, Daryl connected with me. She knew my work, um, connected with me. And as soon as, you know, she uh, uh, told me the idea and what the project was, I jumped at the chance to uh, to make a film about it. I mean, obviously, it's a huge issue um, and uh, it is, you know, historically been something that black people have been fighting for since the end of slavery. Uh, but I, I wanted to make this film about people who were grappling and engaging with reparations today. And you certainly do. We're going to turn to one of those people. Lottie, I do want to talk to you. But first, I think we should see this clip. It's from the film. This really grabs the viewer. It helps us understand your story. Let's watch. I found that my family probably enslaved a few thousand people over 400 years. Another thing I discovered is that my grandmother belonged uh, to a number of clubs, you could call them. I did not expect was to find that she belonged to this club. I want to be accountable for this history. I'm not to blame for my ancestors, acts really of evil, and yet I am my ancestors. So that's a pretty powerful moment, and it really gets at the heart of the film, I think, which is if your family enslaved others, there's some repair work to be done. Um, this film shows a few people doing that. But Lottie, what was the moment for you that made you realize this is what you had to do? You made those starting, startling discoveries, but then what? Really, uh, within, I would say within 24 hours, it was clear to me that I had to engage in repair in some way. And this was completely a new path for me. Like so many white people, I lived in a, in a white bubble, we'll say. All white friends, all white colleagues, mostly white workplace, neighborhood, you name it. And I realized that there was something incomplete about my family's story, about who, who we are, who we had been in history. And the more of the boxes I unpacked, the deeper uh, the evidence that I was missing a very strong bit of information about my family. <clears throat> For instance, I had no idea that my family had engaged in slaveholding. So once I realized that I didn't have the full picture, um, I decided I'd better <clears throat> do some genealogical research. And uh, that really got me going. And within 24 hours, um, I had decided uh, I had heard of a word called reparations. And I decided I need to figure out what that means and how I as a white person could engage in repair <clears throat> in a way that would be meaningful and reparative. So Yoruba... Uh, Lottie just talked about a white bubble. There's active white opposition to this idea. I think in your film, it's pretty well summarized by Mitch McConnell, who says, I don't think reparations for something that happened, you know, 150 years ago, for whom none of us are currently responsible, is a good idea. What should people know about that statement? Wow. Um, yeah, we really, what's one thing about the opposition, we chose to really 
have a, um, you know, have it summarized because we all know we've we've only heard the opposition for the most part. Right. So we wanted to focus on the people who were doing the work. Um, but we know it's important to put in those uh, that that perspective. And, and obviously that Mitch McConnell bite really, really says it all. I think that, you know, hopefully my when people see this film, it sparks them to uh, understand and uncover this country's history more and their own history. And when I think when you do that, like Lottie has said, Lottie said, I'm not responsible for my ancestors' actions, but I want to be held accountable because we know that those actions have consequences. Um, and so I think you at least have the beginning of engaging in conversation and understanding that, yes, those acts of 150 years ago do resonate today for everybody. And that's exactly, uh, your film does get into that. And I think the idea that this is simply something that happened 150 years ago is really debunked by your film. And I think that's a vast gulf of knowledge for a lot of white people. Um, you explain the wealth gap which is really a central concept here. So uh, let's look at this moment in your film where you sort of, uh, I think, neatly spell out exactly where the disparities come from. The New Deal established Social Security. Benefits will be paid to everybody who is entitled to job insurance, which does not include agricultural workers, domestic service in private homes. Well, that's 70 percent of the black labor force at that time. The creation of the GI Bill to help soldiers get training, fund college, but less than 2% of those resources went to black people. The government subsidizing home ownership through the FHA created the middle class. That's a phenomenal thing, but less than 1% of all mortgages in the country went to black people. So you were, we're not talking about repair just for slavery, but the aftermath. Can you explain that? Yeah, I mean, um, where to begin? I mean, slavery ended in 1865. The Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965. We're still fighting for voting rights. Uh, we know the wealth gap is, I don't know what the exact figures are, right now, but it's still vast between the black and the white population. Um, the, you know, it, 2020 uh, was a, they say, you know, called a racial reckoning, looking at police brutality, um, which, you know, is something that we have been dealing with since we were brought here, uh, you know, as slaves. Um, redlining, education, you go down the list and we do and try to do it, you know, summarize it as much as possible. But where that legacy of slavery, I mean, that's what this is about. It was this happened to African Americans. Black people were the ones who, you know, were shut out of mortgages, who were redlined, who were imprisoned at, you know, Incre incredible rates um, who, you know, mo who bear the brunt of police brutality and police violence. So all of this is a legacy of, of slavery. So, uh, Lottie, you actually traced uh, the legacy that is the accumulation of wealth. Can you explain how that works, how the accumulation of wealth up to now really makes those disparities very real? Yes, exactly. And my partner, Brianna Cuffey, and I, we, we make it our business to lecture about the racial wealth gap. And we use our own family histories uh, as the basis for explaining exactly how that works. And when you watch the film, you can see a bit of our lecture. Um, and Yoruba and her team have done a, just a phenomenal job of really detailing all of those aspects. But I can I can show exactly to small details how it works. And because Brianna and I are, were telling our family's stories uh, we have found that even conservative viewers, if we say uh, speak to a faith community or whatever group we're, we're speaking to, most people, you can't really uh, contest 
this information because it's coming right out of our family stories. So for instance, I have records from the Freedmen's Bureau that show that one of my ancestors cheated um, people they had formerly enslaved, but were now their sharecroppers. And uh, you can actually see the documents. And so all of this, all of this cheating on, as small as say cheating on the price of cotton in a share uh, sharecropper's contract, as small as that little detail may seem, it snowballs into the ten to one racial wealth gap. And so, also, Yoruba, your film really does debunk, I think, the idea that many people uh, present, which is the bootstrapping argument. Just work harder, dig deeper. Do you think, have you made an attempt to sort of lay that out here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Lottie and what Lottie and Brianna do in their presentation really does that. And and I think it's really important to say that, you know, to emphasize it's the personal stories that we tell in this film. That's what gets people. You know, we can talk about reparations academically, you know, forever and ever. Um, but people pay attention to the personal stories. And that is uh, and that is, you know, what I what I think this film does does so well. And the bootstrap myth, we've known it was a myth, but to see how it uh, you know, through these two families, how it is yeah. dismantled. Yeah, it's yeah. really I don't think we've quite seen that before. Yoruba, Lottie, thank you so much. This discussion will certainly continue, at least here on GBH. We plan to talk about it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. The Cost of Inheritance, an America Reframe special premieres tonight at 10 o'clock here on GBH2, online at GBH.org and on the PBS app.